irgendwer, ich weiß gar nicht, woher das kommt, aber irgendjemand macht so eine Compilations mit unfassbar kranken Rigs. Und da möchte ich auch mal reingucken, was das ist. Also wie, wie Compilation, also wie diese Compilation aussieht. Ich bin jetzt mal gespannt. Also hier geht es wirklich um Insane. Also hier geht es wohl um die verrücktesten Rigs, die man so sehen kann. Jetzt bin ich ja mal gespannt. Welcome to SimTour Project Episode 6, Ultra Expensive Edition. All of these setups are out of my budget. That's all I have to say. All of these setups are insanely cool, so make sure to comment down below which one is your favorite. And real quick before we get started, close to 90% of my viewers are not subscribed, so if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, hit the subscribe button and press the like button as it massively helps my channel grow. Das solltest du jetzt übrigens auch tun. Mit der Glocke. Und bei ihm auch. Video findest du in der Beschreibung, weiß Bescheid. And with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, was kommt jetzt? Stand 2022. And starting off from the United States, we have Frank. Frank has been slowly upgrading his setup for around 20 years and it has accumulated to a total cost of around $9,000. Starting with the wheelbase, he is using the Sim Magic Alpha Mini. Paired with that, he's got the Sim Magic GT4 and GT1 wheel rims, which look okay. incredibly nice. Around the wheel deck, he's got a lot of cool gear, including a DSD Race King button box, an audient sound amplifier, speakers, a keyboard and mouse arm, which also Katze. attaches onto his chassis, and of course, an H pattern shifter and handbrake made by VNM Simulations. Ooh, cool. And that's just the start. Down below, he's got the Husingvelt Sim Pedals Ultimate Plus, which I believe features a 200 kg load cell brake. Holding all of his gear, Frank is using a Rig Metal Plus Sim Racing Cockpit with the freestanding Rig Metal Triple Monitor Stand to hold up his Triple Gigabyte M27Q 144Hz 27-inch gaming monitors. Attached onto the chassis, he's also got the NRG FRP300 seat, which I've seen several times throughout the series. One of my favorite parts about this entire setup is that Frank added LED strips underneath the chassis to give a glowing red effect, which looks surprisingly cool. I also love the smaller attention to details he's got, such as a cup holder on the side of his rig, along with a headphone holder underneath it, a mouse plate on his right hand side, a microphone hung up from a boom arm, and a pair of dedicated Sparco racing shoes. Die sehen aus die Schuhe wie vom Weihnachtsmann. Finally then, powering all of this, Frank's got a custom-built PC with an RTX 3080, an i9 9900K, and 32GB of RAM, all housed in a Thermaltake Core V21 case. Oh, an absolute monster of a PC to say the least. Frank, congratulations on your setup and thank you for submitting. Thank you. Wir sehen heute, glaube ich, Sachen, die wir so normaler. Das ist ein Holz. Der pristine Setup, we have made. He's a 37 year old from the United States, and after around three years of upgrading, his Setup has cost him around four thousand dollars. To my surprise, he's actually using a cockpit he built and designed himself out of wood. And considering that it's holding up a ton of very capable sim racing gear, okay. he clearly knew what he was doing. On his wooden rig, he's attached a Bride Stratia 2 fiberglass racing seat with a ton of cool customization on the back. He's rocking the 8nm Fanatec CSL DD wheelbase along with the Fanatec BMW GT2 and McLaren GT3 rim, which seems to not have the McLaren logo on it. Can't blame you, I'm not much of a McLaren fan myself. This is auch komplett modifiziert, this thing. Das Ding ist komplett modifiziert, das Lenkrad. Base, he's got a smartphone serving as a digital dash display, and upon closer inspection, you'll also see he seemed to add some carbon fiber weave patterns onto his wheelbase. Okay. On his right hand side, Was? he also has a lot more cool gear, including the Fanatec Club Sport Shifter V1.5 with an aftermarket rally or carbon fiber knob, the good old Club Sport handbrake, and a very nice DIY button box with blue toggles. He's also got a smaller DIY button box underneath his wheel plate because why not? Talking about underneath, that's where he's got the Houston Belt Sprint pedals, which he managed to secure in place with screws onto his wooden rig. Now that's the power of the Home Depot. As per his display, he's <laughs> using a 65-inch Vizio 4K TV, oh. although he's planning on upgrading to triples when he gets more space. Talking about space, that was a big concern for Nate throughout the creation of his rig, which is why he designed it to be very mobile. Not only can he easily move it around, but he's also secured every cable with sleeves and made it as modular as possible to fit the constraints of his room. Schön, das ist richtig Since geil. he streams on Twitch, he's also got a bunch of streaming gear like webcams, a microphone on a boom arm, and several lights. Talking about lights, he also placed LED strips underneath his rig for that glowing effect. Huh. 
Finally, his PC is custom built inside the Cullinan MX case and has an EVGA RTX 27, Intel i9-9900K, and 32GB of RGB Corsair Vengeance RAM. Nate, thanks for sharing your setup and keep up the good work. That's really good. Cool. Du weißt, dass es Marke Selbenbau, äh, Eigenbau ist, wenn das Rig nicht schwarz ist. <lacht> Dann weißt du sofort Bescheid. Joe is up next with a perfect example of a compact single monitor setup. Joe's a 37-year-old software engineer from the United States and his setup has an estimated cost of around $4,400. Starting off, he's using the Rig Metal Plus chassis to hold everything up alongside the Energy FRP301 seat. As per his wheelbase, that would be the Simmagic Alpha Mini paired with the suede Simmagic GT1 wheel. To the left of that, he's got a DIY button box he made himself with a no-name AliExpress shifter on the right-hand side. <laughs> then down below, he's got the Houston Belt Sprint pedals, which look very nice paired with the carbon fiber base. One of the coolest things about this setup is how Joe managed to hook up his display onto it. To do that, he's using an Ergotron arm which holds up his 34-inch 144Hz gigabytes, 34-inch 144Hz gigabyte 140, <laughs> which holds his 34-inch 144Hz gigabyte. Übrigens, äh, du da draußen, wenn du wissen möchtest, wie man das hier ausblenden kann, ne? ich habe bei YouTube ein Video, acht Tipps für Assetto Corsa von Sachen, die du nicht wusstest, dann kannst du das da wegmachen. Das stört nämlich. Immer wenn ich das bei Leuten sehe, denke ich mir so, puh, schade, hättest du das Video geguckt, hättest du es ausmachen können. Aber ich denke, die meisten Leute wissen das gar nicht, dass man das ausmachen kann. Wusste ich übrigens auch super lange nicht. Schöne Grüße gehen raus an Evorox, denn der hat mir das nämlich verraten. p monitor Finally, powering all of this, Joe's got an RTX 3060 XC, a Ryzen 5 3600 and 16GB of DDR4 RAM. Ganz schön kleines Gehäuse. Again, a big fan of the compact size and high functionality of this rig. Thank you, Joe, for submitting. Schön. Oh, jetzt sind wir an dem Punkt angekommen, wo ich sage, er wird es wird's interessant. Okay, let's go. And moving on to one of my all-time favorite submissions, we have Fabian, or Fabian, I'm not really sure. He's a 27-year-old from Austria, and it's taken him around two years to put all of this together. You also know a con- Okay, ich wollte gerade sagen, Maga, du hast äh, USB in der Wand drinne? Nee, es ist der PC. Hohoho, ich wollte gerade sagen! Wow, das sieht aber richtig schick aus. He's a 27-year-old from Austria, and it's taken him around two years to put all of this together. Schön. You also know it costs him a lot of money when he doesn't include... Du weißt, es ist ein guter, wenn er ein Polsimmerlenkrad hat. Du weißt, es ist ein guter, wenn er ein Polsimmerlenkrad hat. Und du weißt auch, dass da eine Menge selber gemacht wurde an dem Ding. Okay, wild. ...the price estimate and instead writes, too much. <laughs> May the Lord have mercy on your soul. What? Anyway, he's got a lot of good gear to talk about, so let's start with his wheel. Fabian's rocking a VRS Direct Force Pro alongside the Paul Seimer F74 LED formula style wheel rim and a much less expensive AliExpress round wheel with 3D wrap shifters. The moment, sagst du gerade zu OMP Wheels AliExpress? Hat er gerade zu OMP AliExpress gesagt? Saba. He also seems to have a smartphone attached on top of his wheelbase to serve as a digital dash display. Next to that, you probably I hope you five the folks, young man. Notice the emergency on/off button, which I'll talk more about in a minute. On his right-hand side, he's got a DIY button box with the same AliExpress H pattern shifter the previous submission had. Huh. Fabian also has a lot of small 3D printed mods to include. Aye, that's Lenker. Schön. The functionality of his rig. For example, a headphone holder, a cup holder which holds up his cameras and gloves, and a keyboard holder to the side of his chassis. Das ist richtig stabil. Down below you probably notice the DC Sim Racing DC3 pedal set, which I've never heard of, but certainly looks like a high quality bit of gear. Behind those pedals is where he's attached one of two butt kickers, and for ultimate immersion he's using a DIY motion platform which is inspired by the SFX100 motion system. Take a look at it in action. <laughs> the 
By now you're probably wondering what cockpit he's using. Well, he's using a custom made aluminum profile rig with a B Marco Cobra 2 bucket seat attached. As for the display, it's the incredible 49 inch Samsung Auto CG9 Super Ultra Wide Monitor, which is actually not attached onto the chassis. Rather, it's wall mounted using a retractable monitor arm, which is crazy to think about. Ich würde fast sagen, Fabian ist in irgendeiner Form entweder sehr, 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 sehr handwerklich unterwegs in seinem Leben oder er ist ein Ingenieur. Eins von beiden. Ah, oh, super clever. Considering the size and weight of this monitor, sehr, sehr clever. there's actually a really good reason for this. Schön. You see, the entire Sim Racing cockpit is built to be as mobile as possible, with nearly all cables routing back and plugging into the power bank behind the seat. Moreover, it's wired in a way so that the whole rig with everything on it powers on and off via the emergency stop button I previously mentioned. Fabian mm. designed the whole rig so it can lower onto a roller board and can be wheeled away into storage. The monitor can then be pushed back and it all transforms into your usual desk setup. And if all of that wasn't enough, I'm yet to talk about his PC, which houses an RTX 3080, a Ryzen 5 5600X, and 32 gigabytes wow. of RAM, all housed in a Leon Lee dynamic tempered glass case. Fabian, congratulations, you're winning at life, and thank you for submitting. <laughs> you're winning at life, okay. Wow, that's not richtig. Finishing off the episode. Warte mal kurz, is this an ultra wide and kleine Bildschirme? So it's with Chris, a 32 year old from Germany who has spent an estimated, get this, $25,000 on his setup. Unfortunately, half of the photos he sent in are blurry, but considering he has a nice rig, I'll let it slide this time. Starting off, he's got an enclosed setup he DIY'd himself from PVC pipes in Alcantara. This is definitely giving me some ideas. Anyways, as per the rest of his gear, let's start with the wheelbase. Chris is rocking the Simicube 2 Ultimate with a plethora of wheel rims attached onto it. Those are the, here we go, turn racing steering wheel with an STD 2 <laughs> with an STD. <laughs> Turn racing wheel with an STD20 WD wired button box, OMP GT rim, deep dish OMP wheel with an RD22WS Riley button box, and the Precision Sim Engineering LM Pro rim. <laughs> Chris zeigt mal wieder, warum ihm das so, warum Chris einfach, weißt du, Chris so, I don't give a fuck, Alter. Du kriegst jetzt einfach verwackelte Fotos, ist mir scheißegal, friss oder stirb. Ich bin zum Fahren hier und du machst den Rest. Fertig. Rim. I'm not gonna lie, I originally doubted the price estimate Chris gave me, but after looking up some of the prices of these wheels, I certainly do not anymore. <laughs> Alongside the wheelbase, he's also got a ton of other gear worth mentioning, including a Morbid Tech BB1 and Sim Racing for You USB Ooh. button box, an Elgato Stream Deck being held up by a Sim Core mount. And hey, du musst mir schon zwei Button Boxes und dann kommt immer noch ein Stream Deck zum Einsatz und zwar großes. Digital dash okay. Units from Precision Sim Engineering and Grid Engineering. Adding to that, he's got a Dentsu flag indicator as well as the Apex Sim Racing traction lights. The power consumption goes crazy at his house. As per his shifter, that would be the PSL Sequential Shifter V2, paired with the Husenvelt handbrake right next to it. Wow. Talking about Husenvelt, he's not using their pedals. Instead, he's using the Sim Racing Pro GT pedal set with the blue anodized pedal faces. These probably cost more than your monthly mortgage. Uh, what, uh, 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 also, noch nie von gehört, gesehen? Is das hydraulisch? Sieht so aus? Abgespaced? Holding everything up, Chris is using a DIY 4080 aluminum profile cockpit with a GT Omega seat attached. Kommen wir bitte zu den Monitoren? His SimLab triple monitor stand holds up a 49-inch super ultra-wide display in the middle, paired with two 27-inch gaming monitors on either side. No idea how he managed to mount or even configure this in-game, but he did. Finally, the PC... Wow! Chris, ich bin sexuell! Ich fühle mich von dir angezogen! Wow! Powering all of this features an RTX 2070, Intel 7800, and 16GB of RAM. Chris, congratulations and thank you for sharing your rig with us. Sehr, sehr stabil. Just like that, this wraps up episode 6 of SimTour Project. Make sure to comment down below which setup is your favorite, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure to press the like button and subscribe to stay tuned. Abo ist raus. Also Fabian war auch mein Favorit. Richtig, richtig, richtig krass. Maga? Das war wirklich allerfeinste Arbeit. Richtig schick. Ganz toll.